Hello everyone, welcome to Tactica Imperialis and to today's video. Today is going to be something a little bit different, something I haven't done in a long time, and that's going to be an unboxing video. Today is Saturday the 27th of June at the time of recording, and I've just gone downstairs to find that my Lumineth Realm Lords starter box has just arrived. Now I know G-Dubs has done a very good job of showcasing everything that's in here, so you may have seen half of this before, but we haven't seen all the frames in full detail, <clears throat> and we get to have a first flick through the battle tome. Obviously, I'm not going to get it into all the details here, though if you would like me to do a My Thoughts on Lumineth video um, after I've had a read of their battle tome, kind of as a mini review, then I would be interested in doing that, so please let me know in the comments. As you can see by the shininess on here, this is still in its shrink wrap. I still haven't actually busted open yet. So, I'm going to have a go at that now. If I need to, I'll do a jump cut, depending on how long this takes me. Hopefully, it won't take too long. I have to say, I still love this Teclis artwork. And I still wish Teclis could be taken without the Spirit of Hish. Or just put somewhere else on the Spirit of Hish when I get my... If and when I get a Teclis model. Um, I will end up getting a Teclis model. I know what I'm like. Ah, good. It comes off very easily. Which is good. And we open it up. Fine. Exactly the same again. There's your sort of cover poster. That will probably end up on my wall if uh, my next landlord allows me. Uh, just Age of Sigma on the back. And we're straight into the frames. So what have we got here? So this frame here is the Venari Oralan Wardens. In fact, I'm just going to, just so I don't have frames on frames, I'm going to just move this off to one side and put this down. Yeah. This is a little behind the curtain of how I do Tactica Tutorialis uh, with my recording. So, this here is the Oralan Warden's frame. You can see a bit of it here. Uh, you can see tabards. Interestingly, I think we saw this frame from GW itself um, prior to launch. In fact, I'm going to put this with the checklist artwork. It's a little bit less vivid. Um, so, you can see they've got most of their body in one piece, and then you'll put one leg into there and the front chest piece, as well as something on the back. Um, got the heads that sit on very nicely. They look like they'll be quite customizable. You can swap them over uh, with other Elven kits. At least I'm expecting I'm going to do that. Though they do appear to be probably matched up. So each torso goes to a specific, um, or each front chest goes to a specific back chest, which is fine, but it does end up that some of the models couldn't end up looking quite samey, which I'm not entirely a fan of. Uh, you've got all this here. This, I'm assuming, is what your unit champion will have. Yeah, that's for your unit champion. Uh, I don't recognise that component. This one here, this, like, pillar. Uh, I don't recognise it instantly, though I'm sure if I look back at the sprue uh, and at the models fully built, I'll recognise it within five seconds. Uh, so that's probably just me. So there's some of the Oralan Wardens. I count about five on here, so I think it'll be about two of those. Yep, it is. It's two of the same. Um, so you can see you've got actually enough components to build, see here, a second champion, uh, which is interesting. I wasn't expecting them to do that because I thought that the Wardens could only be taken in tens. So if you can take them in fives, that will be interesting as an alternate build. Uh, you've got this sort of mage staff thing here. There's the sword. And the length of these spears is just... Look how long this spear is. It's it's really long. I, actually, I'm just going to grab a miniature. Hang on. So this is a miniature I've been working on recently. Uh, this is a, a Black Ark Fleetmaster conversion. And you can see the spear is kind of like almost... If I take away the helm crest, it's about twice the size of this miniature. And this is like a square base on top of a round base with a crest fin. These spears are massive. Like, I knew they were big because they've got a three-inch reach in game, but that's madness. So, yeah, good luck transporting them, I suspect. Uh, then we've got three frames for the Venari Cavalry, the Dawn Riders. And this is the sprue we haven't seen before at all. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting into this one. So... Interestingly, it seems that the horses come in many, many pieces. Quite often in the past, um, Elven Cavalry, the horses would come in two pieces. So you'd have the left side and the right side, and then you'd put the head on the front. So, okay, three pieces, and then you'd attach the reins if you had to. 
These horses appear to come in four. So you've got the two side bardings and the two lower halves of the body as well. And then you've got the head. So it's five pieces. Uh, so I'm thinking this is one Dawn Rider. This will be one Dawn Rider and so on and so forth. Yep. So there's probably the, roughly the same again. And then on here is your fifth one, which is probably your unit champion. Can't confirm that. But then over here, you've got the banner, uh, a sort of back banner, um, the helms, shields. So, yeah, it's five separate horses and then all the sort of command elements, I think, and the shields sit there. So it's a very different style of cavalry, which probably explains why they look so fluid compared to some of the older cavalry who they really struggle to get looking fluid, though I do know about the dressage memes involving the Dawn Riders. And we've got the Lights of Eltharion, one of my favourite miniatures of all time, and I still firmly believe it could be Miniature of the Year. It's that good. Um, I think I'm going to need some practice getting this one put together, just because I know all the different bits go together very neatly. Like, So there's the legs attached to one part of the base, the other legs attached to another part of the base. Uh, you've got a third part of the base with the other leg. Or oh, Actually, hang on, that's a sword bit. Sorry, that's a sword, that's a leg, that's a leg, and there's some more base there. So they've obviously put a lot of thought into creating this hollow miniature, uh, and I'm really looking forward to working on it. Uh, and I know that painters who are good at object source lighting will have a, an absolute field day with it. So very, very good. Um, again, lots of pieces per miniature. So this one's got... How many pieces is it in? I'm just reading the numbers off the front. About 13 components, which for a named character is, or for an infantry character, is quite a lot. Then we get into all of the logistical bits and bobs. So we've got uh, over here the tokens, so ether quartz tokens, which is a mechanic that each unit in your army starts with some ether quartz. You've got your measuring stick as well. Let's get this opened up, shall we? I'll try and do it neatly so that I can pack it all away later. So what have we got? There we go, perfect. So we've got the um, War Scroll cards. Well, I think they're all, well, certainly there's your Battle Traits of Ether Quartz Reserves. You've got different ones for different units. Uh, so Heightened Senses, Heightened Reflexes, uh, Magical Boost, Magical Insight. So different things you can do with Ether Quartz to remind you. Uh, different command traits. So this one's for a Sinari, which is the one with the veil over her face. I'm not going to go through all of these now. Uh, I'll unpack them on my own time, I think. And they go back in there. And then here you've got different tokens. Normally, sometimes they have their names on the back. They don't in this case. You see there's the Light of Eltharion. Um, that's his helm. That's Teclis's uh, Spirit of Hish. That's the Stone Mages. Uh, so some useful tokens there, though what they serve, I could not say right now. Um, there's the Ether Quartz when they've not used them, and the Ether Quartz when they have. Uh, I think this might be for Mountain Stance with your Alarith units, because there's a thing called the Mountain Stance. Uh, so that might be a thing, though I'm not sure what this represents on the back. And as I said, Measuring Stick, um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in tape measures, but it's still good to have one. Got the Core Rulebook. Uh, so if you don't want to just be flicking through all of the stuff in the big rule book, you've got the core rules there. That's don't need to explain the core rules of Age of Sigmar to anybody. Assembly guide. Good. I think we're going to need it in this particular case. Um, so if I just look at the lights of Eltharion, so you can just see on here what it looks like. It's it I'm not sure how I'm gonna paint it in terms of sub-assemblies and everything. I think that's the big challenge, is working out sub-assemblies and um, what to paint when because uh, you want to get it built as much as you can before you start painting it but also where do you stop because it's hollow you need to paint all the inside bits of the armor as well so it might be you paint every single component on the frame to make sure you have access to all the internals of the armor as well alternate builds for the cavalry i'm not i'm not going to spend too long going through this again i'll do that on my own time and then we get to the big shiny thing at the bottom I could have sworn this came with dice. Am I being silly or is this, is this supposed to come with... Ah, there's some more bits hidden away. There we go. There's the dice. 
And there's your measuring gauge. I've never had one of these boxes before, so I don't know how they work. And there's the bases. <laughs> I love how I didn't even consider, oh, where are the bases? They're down there. So that's just some intuitive box design, I guess. Uh, I'll, there's the Lumineth dice. They're very pretty. Uh, I'm not going to pull them out because then I'll lose half of them. I know me. So I'll pop them back away. If I can. There we go. And we have the limited edition battle tome with an Alarith uh, stone guard on the front and the spirit of the mountain, not the stone half king. Uh, that's the one who looks like he's got a volcano. There's a lot more red and has two hammers, not one. Now this is, to be honest, the main reason I bought this box because um, it was partly, I didn't know when the Lester Lumineth were coming out and partly because I've never had a limited edition battle tome before. And it's very pretty. It's very pretty. Oh, gold lining on the pages as well. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I don't know how, yeah, you can see that pretty clearly. So we open it up. Uh, they're fighting, so that's Teclis fighting Sh Shalaxi Hellbane, which is a piece of artwork we've seen elsewhere. So let's just have a quick read of this front bit. The Realm Lords, the Lumineth call themselves, for their mastery over the lands is unrivaled. These numinous beings, the elven scions of the twin gods Tyrion and Teclis, have scintillating magic in their blood. They have dwelt long in Hish, the realm of light, where enlightenment and skill saturates the very air. The Lumineth have absorbed so much of this innate potential that, when at war, they glow with lambent power. To face their war hosts is to face a barrage of magic, a forest of blades, a crashing assault of elemental wrath. That claim of mastery also carries a deadly arrogance. The Lumineth come in glory, but hail from a broken land. Their elegant spires toppled and their statuary crumbled in the dust of a dead empire. The stories tell that it was the scourge of chaos that ravaged Tish, that the transformation of the Ten Paradises into spell-haunted ruin was unavoidable, but it was a terrible civil war that opened the door. Yeah, they've kind of gone all sundering uh, on and fall of the Eldari with the Lumineth, which, all right, fine, it's always the elves' fault. Since the time of the reinvention, the Lumineth have made their peace with the lands they call home. Now they go to war in all the splendour of bygone days, the warrior Vanari phalanxes gleaming bright, catching the blinding rays of magic sent searing out by the gifted Sinari cast. Alongside them watch the warriors of the Elementary Temples, those who are bonded in mind, body and spirit with the geomantic entities of their shattered homelands. Most majestic of all are the towering avatars of those magical places, the war forms of Hish itself. All who threaten the Lumineth's agenda will be mercilessly removed for existence. The Lumineth fight a war for reality itself, and in that war, there can be no sacrifice too great. So yeah, the Lumineth are still slightly evil. Um, all elves are slightly evil in this game. That's kind of normal. Um, so there's your Lumineth army fighting Slanesh. You've got the Dawn Riders. Uh, the Warden, no, I always forget the name of the archers, what are they called? Uh, the Sentinels, Sentinels, it's in the contents. Um, Spirit of the Mountain, more Sentinels, Stoneheart King, some really nice stuff, and it's obviously you can see the Lumineth looking badass and doing their thing with the Light of Eltharion at the fore. So I'm not going to go through this in full, I'm just going to flick through a few pages. So there's your background, the Age of Myth. This will like flesh out Teclis' role in Slanesh. Um, some detail on Hish and Ulgu, actually. They might talk a bit about Ulgu as well, which will be lovely. Uh, the Fall, a bit more about Hish. The Teclian Vanguard. So this is one of the battalions, actually, I think, if I recall correctly. Uh, so you get an idea of what the battalions look like. Uh, different um, societies, different sort of areas within the realms. Just going to flick through a couple of these. I'm not going to spend too long, as I say. I'm just flicking through, just to give you a look at it. Um, there they are again. They're against corn. Ah, there's actually a bookmark in here as well. That's quite nice. There's a bookmark. You're not used to getting a bookmark in your battle tomes. Showcase bit. Showcase bit. Showcase bit. Showcase bit. Uh, so you've got different um, color schemes, which is, I think, the main thing I'm interested in. So you see here, instead of having the blue trim, they've got red trim for this Iliatha. Uh, this one's got silver armor and blue robes, which I really like. Uh, you've got this white with orange robes. Now, that's going to stand out like miles, which will be really interesting. I think some people have some lot of fun with these color schemes. Uh, there's a few over here. Um, I don't know how well I'll get these to show up on screen. Again, you've got uh, the orange and white, the silver and blue, gold armor, if you don't like painting white so much. 
there's plenty of options in here, which is great. Painting guide for at least your metrica. Uh, they don't decide to give you the rest of them because of course they don't. Oh no, they do. They're good. Good. Iliatha, Zytrek, Emetrica. Um, so not all of them, but some of them. And then we get into their rules. Uh, the Ether Quartz Reserves, which I've mentioned earlier. Lightning Reactions. The Great Nations, uh, which you don't have to take. You can. You don't have to, which is nice. Uh, Absorb Despair, which will be interesting. And we've got different traits for Benari, Alarith, uh, Sinari, which is the Wizards. Or the Sinari Cathalar, I should say. Spell Laws. Uh, so the Law of Hish for everyone. And then the Alarith get the High Peaks as well as Teclis. More rules here. Uh, battle plan, battle plan, path to glory, skip, and the different battalions. So that's your Teclian Vanguard is going to be the only way you can get Teclas. It's kind of like Marathian Temple uh, in the Daughters of Cain. This one down here. Alarith Temple, Aurelan Legion, um, which is a shame because you have to take a Cathalar, and the Dawn Rider Lance. And then we get into some more rules. I'm not going to go through them here, as I say. Did it, did it, did it. Endless spells and ah, I saw this. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna move my camera now so I can zoom in on this. So apologies for the movement. So here we have the points costs, which I think most of us are interested in, um, in terms of how you put your army together. So wardens are your only battle line, but it says down here, and I'll just try and get the light. For each Warden's unit, you can take a Sentinel's or Dawn Rider's unit as battle line. So for each Spearman you take is a battle line unit, you unlock either an Archer's or a Cavalry as battle line as well, which is interesting. Uh, the Stone Guard get battle line in your Metrica. They get notes for, yeah, that's fine. Uh, leaders, unique, unique, unique. Three Behemoth options, obviously. There's the Battalion, so I'm just going to try and get this now so you can see them all if you want to screen cap the points. And then their allies. This, 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 this. So the Lumineth's only ally is the Ideneth Deepkin. I'm going to have to troll the battle tome to find a reason for this. Um, because up to now, Stormcast have had the ability to ally with all order factions. And the Lumineth Deep Realm Lords are definitely still an order faction. In fact, I'll go and prove it. There they are. They're an order faction. So Stormcast, for the first time, do not get the ability to ally with a faction, with that being the Lumineth. But the Lumineth themselves can ally with the Ideneth Deepkin, which I find odd because the Ideneth ran away kind of screaming from Teclis to get away from him after he tried to genocide them. So I'm curious to see how they justify this in lore and how they justify the lack of a Stormcast. Well, I have an answer. It's the Penumbral Engines, but I'll be interested to see nonetheless. And with that, that is everything you will find inside the Lumineth Realm Lords starter battle box, whatever you'd like to call it. I don't know, obviously, when all of this stuff will be available for general release, since this was obviously a starter box. And when these frames go on sale, I can't say. Obviously, this is a limited run, uh, and I'm very pleased that I've got my hands on it, because I was really worried I was going to miss out. I have to say, um, having a look through the frames, they're very intricate, and I think that... They're going to push me a bit for my ability to do sub-assemblies and painting, especially the Lies of Eltharion. I'm terrified of that model, but I love it as well, so I'm going to give it a good go. Um, good to have all the unique ability cards, which is good. Uh, the dice are pretty. And the book itself is, well, It's if you've ever had a limited edition book before, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I can't wait to dive into it. And I'll be doing um, certainly full breakdowns with some of my friends. I might do a video on it uh, as well. If you would like me to do a review slash my thoughts on, then let me know in the comments below. But that's all for today. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Tactica Imperialis. And this has been the Lumineth Realm Lords Starter Battle Box Unboxing. I'll see you all again. Bye for now.